Welcome to this AP check on electron configurations and orbital diagrams. I'm going to actually start with these um, couple of pictures here and talk a little bit about the Born model versus the quantum model, which I know I talk about in the um, initial video, and so you can take a look there. But just so you know, just kind of a couple of things to really draw in on here. Um, the Bohr model is not entirely correct. The quantum model is more correct in that we know that electrons are found in orbitals. So this is where electrons are in orbitals. And so they're not using this planetary motion around the nucleus like the Bohr model suggests, but rather they are in regions of probability. So orbitals are regions of probability. Move that over. Probability. Where electrons are most likely to be found. So the nice thing about the Bohr model is it does represent nicely the energy levels or sometimes called the electron shells, okay? And so this, the good thing about that is the energy levels Sometimes these are referred to as electron shells, where we would find those at different energy levels, those electrons. Okay. And there's seven of them. And actually, a really interesting thing is if we scroll down and look, take a look at this um, periodic table, we see those energy levels, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, represented on this periodic table. Now, I think that this the easiest way to write electron configurations is to actually use kind of a counting method on the, the periodic table. And so this kind of superimposes and we can compare it to what's on the, the periodic table. And I, I do a lot of counting. One thing you'll notice is that the S's start with a 1 and the P's start with a 2 and the D's start with a 3 and the, the 4's start with, or the F's start with a 4. And we have this um, energy level Okay, so the big numbers are the energy levels. The sublevel, the S, the P, the D, and the F, are represented by those letters. And then whatever this little um, superscript number is representing the electron number in that sublevel. Okay, and there's a couple other things that we can use, a couple other tools that are nice. Um, the one on the left is how I learned this many years ago. And so this is where we would start here. And we would follow these arrows to, to do the order because we know that electrons must fill from lowest energy level um, up to the highest energy level for a particular element. And so over here, um, we would start here with this 1s, okay? And so those here's are the lowest energy level. So start at the lowest energy and then we build our way up. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. So the first one that we have is argon. And we want to write the electron configuration and orbital diagrams for each of the following. Um, and then we're going to do one more thing after that, which is to do a little analysis here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to find argon. Okay. And so if you were to look on your periodic table, you would find that argon is one, two, it's the third row down, and it would be right here. Now, everything is filled all the way up until we reach whatever element that would be, okay? So that means my 1s's are full, my 2s's are full, my 2p's are full, my 3s's are full, and my 3p's are full all the way up until, actually, they're all the way full because it's argon, it's a noble gas, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent that by writing an electron configuration. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So electron configuration. So I'm going to write 1s and then the superscript of 2 representing the two electrons that are in there. And so all of these are full all the way up until the last um, sublevel for that particular element, 2s. 2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. 
six. And I can actually look on here and there's a couple different ways you can do that, but I'm gonna end at that 3P, that's where I was ending was in the 3P6 position. Okay. Now, another way that we can represent that is with an orbital diagram. And so to do an orbital diagram, it tells us a little bit more. So for an orbital diagram for argon, we're gonna represent each orbital with a line. Okay, so 1s, 2s, so s's only have one orbital. Okay. 2p, the p's have three orbitals, so each line represents an orbital. So three, oops, excuse me, not three. 2p, then 3s, and 3p. Okay. And then we represent up arrows and down arrows um, to represent those electrons. So I do a half arrow, so an up arrow and a down arrow, and we're going to start with the 1s, then we do the 2s. Now technically the way I should write the next one is that we would fill this with all one spin direction first and then backfill with the down spin. Okay. Um, really they're all full so a lot of times I just fill them in but always when I get to that last sublevel, okay, so the 3p is our last sublevel, I would do that same thing and we know that this is full, we can actually do a count on the number of electrons. Sometimes that's nice to do as well. I like to use the periodic table method. Um, took me a while to clue into that, but I think it is a lot more helpful. Okay, let's go ahead and do this for calcium next. So we'll come back up to the top. Let me erase these marks and we'll find calcium. All right, so calcium should be in, it's one, two, three, it's in the fourth level, fourth energy level, or the fourth period, okay, because a row is a period, and it's right here. And so we would, again, fill everything in all the way along here, and I'm just representing, like, where I'm filling. So I go in this order from left to right. So let's go ahead and write that out. So the electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, because it's in that 4s2 position. If it was potassium, just K, then it would be 4s1. And let's go ahead and write the orbital diagram for that. So again, I'm going to color code my s's with only one orbital. My P's have three orbitals. Some people write boxes. Sometimes the textbooks will show a box. I find lines are easier for me to draw. 3s, 3p, and then 4s. Okay, again, we're going to do, um, we have a, a an atomic number of 20, which means we have 20 total electrons. So that's another way that you can do that too. We have a total of 20 electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, sometimes we are asked to do this for ions as well. And so in this case, we have P, phosphorus. And so let's go up and find phosphorus first. So we'll go back up to our periodic table. Again, I'm gonna erase our marks here. All right, so phosphorus is in the third period, the third energy level. Okay. Um, and it is the third one over from the left in the P. So it's the 3P3 position. Now, if it was just phosphorus, that is where phosphorus would be. But if it gains three electrons, it would gain one electron, 
a second electron and a third electron and so it's going to actually um, look just like argon that was already that 3p6 so there's a couple different ways to do this we could say oh well phosphorus has um, an atomic number of 15 and then it gained three electrons so that means there's 18 electrons which is what we have um, or we can kind of use that periodic table to jump as well and so those are a couple different methods that you can use so let's go ahead and write that electron configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p again if it was just the element it would be 3p3 but since it's the ion with the 3 minus charge okay that is what's making this 3p6 okay so the 6 is coming from the fact that we've gained three electrons and that looks identical to the electron configuration to argon and so we know that the orbital diagram I could write it out all over again but our orbital diagram is going to look exactly the same as well here and there's a term that we use for this and it's isoelectronic so they're iso meaning same electronic meaning electrons and so we have the these two grab different pen here so when we're saying isoelectronic or having the same electron configuration, the ion that we have for phosphorus and argon are isoelectronic. Electronic. Okay, they have the same electron configurations. Now, we actually could get the same thing if we had the ion for calcium. So calcium is a two plus ion when it forms. So say we had calcium as a two plus. I'll just write this here, Ca2 plus. And if that was the case, we would actually omit the 4s electrons and that would drop us down into the 3p now that's not what it was asking us in this problem but that is something that could potentially happen if it ionized all right now we have another way of representing these since we have things that are isoelectric to one another we can actually just represent the previous noble gas and then write the addition of the remainder of the electron configuration so let's go ahead and do that and so the noble gas electron configuration is what we're going to look at here and so if i go and i find sodium sodium is in the one two it's the third row down it's the 3s1 position the previous noble gas is 2p6 and that is neon and so what i do is i write neon in brackets and then I write whatever remains in the next um, energy level, okay? And so I'm going to do that right here. So I'm going to say neon and then 3s1. Okay. Let's try that for chromium. So chromium is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. It's right here delete the other one out and so it's previous noble gas okay you have to go backwards or go across and up one the previous noble gas is going to be well argon again we've done a lot with argon in this particular situation and so we would use argon and write argon in brackets so let's go ahead and do that argon and then we're going to rewrite the remainder of the electron configuration after argon. So we would have 4s2, and from 4s it goes to 3d. And 3d, 1, 2, 3, it would be 4. Okay. Now we'll try lead here as well. Lead's a bit trickier because we have to go through some other things. So let's find lead. Lead is 1, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's in the sixth period. So, and it is in the P2 position. So, 6P2. The previous noble gas is going to be in the 5P6. Now, the tricky bit with this is that we're going to have to represent 
the 6S2, and then it jumps down here. We actually fit these in for the lanthanides and actinides right after the, the 6S and the 7S. So it's gonna have to go through the 4Fs, through the 5Ds, into the 6Ps before we get to lead. And so if you get something further down on the periodic table, that can be a bit tricky sometimes. So let's write that. So we're gonna have, um, the previous noble gas was xenon. I guess I should have checked that a little more closely. And then we're going to have, after xenon, we're gonna have 6S2, 4F14, 5D10, and 6P2. So a little trickier there. I'm actually going to skip the electron, the valence electron orbital diagram for now. That's something we can talk about in class a little bit. Okay, so sometimes we might want to also just evaluate what's going on with, with an orbital diagram or an electron configuration. And I mean, we could write these out as well. So like this one is 1s2, 2. actually, I don't want to say that. This one is an element in its excited state. And so this one, we actually want to just count up how many electrons we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Okay, it's in the excited state, but it's not an ion. It's not ionized. And so the element on the periodic table that has six electrons, because it also has six protons, is carbon. And carbon does an interesting thing in its excited state. Um, normally, it would have a down arrow here, and it wouldn't have this one. But when it's in excited state, it actually jumps up in that energy level to get ready to bond. And then when it bonds, it lowers its overall energy status. So that one is carbon. I guess I could write out carbon. Okay. The next one is 2P6. And it's saying we want something that's isoelectronic to neon because neon would be the noble gas and something that would have a three plus charge. So the three plus charge, we would have to find out what would, when it loses three electrons, would form a three plus and look like neon. And that's gonna be aluminum. So three plus charge is going to be aluminum. And the three minus charge, it's going to gain three electrons. So we want to count back from neon. So count forward to get the plus charge, count backwards to get the negative charge. And so the three minus charge would be nitrogen. Okay. Or nitrogen, I guess this should be three plus and nitrogen three minus. Okay. Um, the last one is going to be one that is an ion with a two plus charge that has a full 3D orbital. So the thing that is 3D that has a full orbital for the 3Ds would be zinc. And zinc is going to lose the 4S electrons to become an ion. And so that's why you would see something that would look like this. And so this one would be zinc two plus. I hope that's helpful. We'll do some practice actually after we do 1.6 um, 